Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Steve Jobs once said the computer was like the bicycle for the mind. Something that worked with our own mental power, amplified it to push us to higher speeds and new unknown destinations. Well, if the computer is the bicycle, the quantum computer could be thought of as the fighter plane or even the spaceship for the mind. In this video, I'm going to go into the very basics of how a quantum computer works, what it can do that a regular computer can't, what does one actually look like, does it plug in like a regular iMac? A quantum computer is like a standard computer in a lot of ways. A regular computer uses bits to perform computation and derive results. A bit can be defined either as zero or one. Think of it as a switch being either on or off. That's the basis of binary. Those two choices, zero or one, on or off. Each little switch in a computer is called a bit, zero or one. A byte is eight bits. So a megabyte is eight million bits. A gigabyte is eight billion bits, while a terabyte is eight trillion bits. That's how a computer does everything, just by keeping track of and manipulating oodles and oodles of tiny binary switches, on or off, one or zero. A quantum computer uses something called qubits, short for quantum bit in place of the standard bits, which takes things to the next level. Instead of being just zero or one, on or off, like a bit, a qubit is quantum mechanical. It can have a blurry value between zero or one, or even a combination of zero and one. The quantum bit, the qubit, has a fuzzy value. This doesn't seem at first like it could be very useful, but it turns out this fuzziness allows the quantum computer to solve problems that would take even the most powerful conventional supercomputer hundreds of years to chomp through and solve. The volume of information a qubit system can represent grows exponentially. So to put that in perspective, the information easily stored in just 500 qubits could not be represented in a computer with more than two to the 500 classical bits, which is just indescribable, unimaginable. That number is beyond anything we have a name for. It's more computing power than what currently exists on planet Earth right now. For example, it would take a modern supercomputer millions of years to find the prime factors of a 2048-bit number. 500 qubits could perform the same calculation in just a few minutes. When it comes to quantum mechanics and quantum computers, it can get a little confusing, and it took me quite a while to even begin to think about these things with any clarity. I'm always on the hunt for resources that make the learning process less difficult, time-consuming, and defeating, and more engaging and actually enjoyable. Recently, I've been very fortunate to get the opportunity to work with a company called Brilliant. They provide interesting, fun, and useful courses in math, science, and technology. When I first started studying quantum mechanics, when I was going after my PhD, it wasn't easy. One of the things I wished I had back then was Brilliant. Their course, Introduction to Linear Algebra, would have helped me with my problem sets and helped me better understand the coursework. I'd taken plenty of classes in calculus and differential equations, but back then, linear algebra wasn't a requirement for materials engineering, so I skipped it. This was a problem when I started studying higher level solid state physics. It's hard to understand something conceptually when you're bogged down in math. For quantum mechanics, and anything related to the engineering of quantum computers, and really anything technical in general, linear algebra and being good with matrices is going to make solving systems of equations and life in general much easier. Don't be like me. Don't learn on the fly and end up stressing out way too much. Get a solid background and introduction to linear algebra from Brilliant. You can learn at your own pace and fit it in when you have time. The high anxiety of the intimidating professors, classrooms, and exams are gone, and Brilliant leaves you with what you actually need to understand the material. That's how you become competent and creative in science and technology, and how you maintain one of the keys to happiness, which is lifelong learning. Brilliant has figured out the best interactive way of learning science, math, and technology. Even if you're a beginner or a seasoned veteran scientist or engineer, or just someone who's interested, who realizes that understanding STEM 
will help you make so much more sense of this mad world. You'll find something that you'll enjoy and will actually enrich your life on Brilliant. After I'm done blowing your mind about the potential of quantum computers, check out some of their courses for free at Brilliant.org or click the link in the description. For the esteemed Vanadium audience, they're offering 20% off the price of their annual subscription for the first 200 people. I've given only the most basic primer on what bits and qubits are so far in this video. But if these ideas are really interesting, if you're feeling the urge to go deeper, to really understand computer science, after this, check out Brilliant's course, Computer Science Fundamentals. They even have a course on quantum computing. This is the way if you want to develop and really put together the ideas of bits and qubits and how they form the basis of computation. A quantum computer, when it's performing a calculation, is able to summon information across all states of the qubit, zero and one, as well as a blended state of all the combinations, the superpositions of zeros and ones. A qubit system relies on quantum entanglement between elements, so faster than light, spooky action at a distance between different parts of the computer. Just imagine the kind of complexity and the kind of speed you could achieve with a qubit design. There are three primary ways of building a machine that does this. Physical quantum computers rely on technologies such as superconducting circuits developed from the ideas of physicist Brian Josephson called transmons. There are versions based on ion traps which use electromagnetic fields to confine charged particles to one spot to isolate them from the outside world and preserve their fuzzy quantum coherent state. The third and most advanced versions still currently in the concept phase are topological quantum computers, which use exotic particles that can only exist inside certain kinds of semiconductor crystals. Right now, these machines aren't ready for Best Buy or the Apple Store, and are still suited for specialized labs that can provide the kind of high power and liquid helium cooling these things need to operate. Probably the most significant hurdle in quantum computing is the fragile nature of qubits themselves. Unintentional entanglement of the qubit system with its environment, including the measurement setup, could easily perturb the system, cause decoherence and loss of information. There's been major focus on developing innovative hardware construction to shield the qubits from the outside world and error correction methods to help when the outside world does contaminate the quantum realm. Once these issues, which right now seem difficult, even insurmountable, eventually get sorted out and eventually seem almost trivial. We're going to have a tool that can help us solve math problems that we can never even approach. We'll be able to model realistically complex systems like the stock market and human body and begin to gain insights, perhaps even predict the future in some capacity. There's an arms race in this field with everyone including IBM and Microsoft investing heavily in developing these next generation computers. Even with these computer giants in the field, the group furthest along in the race for a quantum supercomputer is a small company in Maryland called IonQ. Their general purpose quantum computer, based on ion trap technology, packs a whopping 20 qubits. That doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, this is just the beginning. This is the same way it started for the classic conventional computer. At first it was just a few bits, then before we knew it, it had changed the world. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.